that stuck out here in this, the countryside. One wouldn't expect to see such a wonderful uh, towers in this church. But there is one, and I'm going to stop and have a look at it. Magnificent church in the middle of a field, effectively, in the middle of nowhere, just about. The old rectory. That certainly does look like an old rectory. Looks like something out of a ghost film or something. Oh, wonderful tree stump. This isn't the way into the church, though. So this is St. Michael the Archangel. Look at this huge church. Fantastic architecture. The amount of work that went into this. It's now disused, although it's still consecrated and it's protected by some uh, ecclesiastical organisation which uh, looks after churches. Okay, there's a font. It's a pretty big one. Maybe not as quite as ornate as some of them I've seen, but it's uh, pretty, pretty big. Look at these wonderful stained glass windows. Amazing! Yeah, look at the beauty of that. The, the amount of work. It won't come up badly because the sun's there. And the, the objective of building these churches like this was to, it was to show the majesty of God and all the rest of it. Of course, me with more left-wing political ideas, I would have thought the best thing to do would have been to show the majesty of God, would have been to have uh, built proper housing and infrastructure and water supply and things like that. But that's not take it for that from the... Uh, the beauty of the architecture, the, the, the effort, the work, the that went into this, looking at some of the um, grave markers on the walls uh, from the mid-19th century. Yeah, the, what is called the, the choir. Uh, you, you, you want, uh, doesn't expect to come out here and see something like this literally in the middle of nowhere, a disused church, but, wow, oh, just look at the, the detail in these stained glass, incredible, the work that went into that, you know, in the, at the time of the Reformation, in the 1530s, the authorities went on smashing the stained glass and putting up normal glass in its place. An incredible act of vandalism. Let me stand here. Absolute majesty of the of the place. So I'm standing at the southeast corner, I would say, of the church. Uh, absolutely incredible architecture, really. And it, it went, went, showed the surrounding area here. Uh, sort of standing at the just fields, as can be seen. Now, uh, this church itself, uh, is, it's 19th century. The person who was responsible for it was born in 1815, I read, so 1816 or something. And the uh, interesting thing is, he is a descendant of uh, the Native American, um, I think, princess or whatever, uh, whatever though, Pocahontas, and who uh, did spend apparently some time here, and or somewhere around here, and uh, apparently he had certain similar characteristics to her. I'm just now repeating what I read in the book, which I picked up. Um, wonderful, isn't it? Really? Look at that. Amazing. The amount of work. It reminds me of other churches, but I can't think of... There's one in particular it reminds me of. I can't place the name of it. If I remember, I'll write it down.
is the most impressive looking cross. But none of these are older than around 150 years. You know, March 25th, 1915. An absolutely amazing structure. I'm off. <laughs>